Hey guys. Hey, happy ha Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy eats and treats. We've missed yep. you guys. We haven't been here for like, well, just, just last week. week. We missed but a week. But it feels like a long <laughs> time. It's been a long couple weeks. It has been a long couple of weeks because there's been a lot of things happening in our life that uh, has been a little bumpy, but that's okay. That's what makes things uh, interesting in life and gives you opportunities to learn and to grow. So For sure. But, of course, you didn't come to watch us talk about our lives at the moment. No. Nope. We want ice cream. Yeah. So, do you see ice cream, you scream, we all for, scream for ice cream. I think that's like, is that an adage that was back in the 80s? I, feel I like, don't know, but it's a do you universal remember that? thing that, that it I is think universal? about Because I don't like, do you, do you guys know about it? I don't know. Everybody knows that. You scream, I scream, we all scream for ice cream, especially in the summer, so. Oh, seriously. Yep. Yes. yes. No, the summertime is when I love it the most, but you know what? I can have ice cream every single day. She could, and <laughs> I stopped doing that. In fact, there was a time where every yeah. night about bedtime, Judy would say, hey, are you craving a milkshake or are you <laughs> craving a sundae? And I'd say, no, and she'd say, are you sure? Oh. So I would end up going and making ice cream sundaes or shakes so yeah no, we had to sure. break that habit real fast because it was starting to get a little blimpy no so. I, I actually didn't get blimpy <laughs> but that was back in my like early 30s i, mean, I was I, feeling blimpy i love my milkshake every night so guess what we get to have milkshake every night now no we don't <laughs> so uh, only if this is good so i'm gonna get the key ingredients so hang tight so yes yeah, so Judy was like, all right, Jody, yesterday we were trying to decide what we're gonna, going to make, and she said, I think I found an ice cream recipe, so we will see if it's good or not, but it's got three simple ingredients. Here's the key ingredient. This is coconut milk, and it's the full fat coconut milk. Don't get light. No, Don't you gotta reduced. have fat. It's gotta be, just because, so that it can whip up. Now. One time I made something that I was using um, using coconut milk and I didn't realize that you had to chill it. So that's a very important part. So chill your coconut milk first so that the cream rises and it hardens all of this. Now, when we watched the video, The Big Man's World, this is the recipe we got from The Big Man's World. When we looked at that recipe, um, the cream came out a lot, lot harder. Harder like than it, ours It thickened looks. up. So this is not thick. No, well, it's it is not, thick. It's, but it's thicker, but it's not. As his thick. was seemed like semi solid. Take the side because you have all that cream on the side. Yeah, that's okay. what we want. We want all that cream. So, and he said to use the entire can of milk, not to separate it. Oh, that, that one's, one's chunky. Oh, you missed it. They, Sorry. they can't see any yeah, of this. Yeah, that's okay. Like, it's all good. So it's uh, that one was a so bit more chunky. So you missed it. Sorry. So it did chunk up. I'll move this a little closer. It did so. chunk up. Here. Excuse me a second. Go Let ahead. Let me show them something. Because that's really hard. The pieces. Yeah, there's a piece. I <laughs> can't get it out. <laughs> Never mind. There's a big chunk in there. There's Take our word for it. There's so. a chunk in there that it did get chunky. So it was Kay. awesome. Hey, Karen. It's Duffin. How are you? Good to have you on. Hoping your family's well. Awesome. Hey, Holly. Yeah. Ah, hey, guys. Family member Holly. Yep. All right. So what's next? <laughs> um, do we mix that first or do we add stuff? No, you're supposed to add all this. So this all is right. a half a cup of peanut butter. Now, this can be um, paleo friendly if you use a nut butter So because peanuts are legumes. So you can't use that if you want to be paleo um, friendly. So, but you can use cashew butter, any kind of seed butter, that kind of stuff, almond butter. Okay. Okay, that's a half a cup. And then we're using, you're gonna have to use a spoon. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, so we're using honey as a sweetener. That's a half a cup of honey. But you could use, if you want it to be keto friendly, you can use um, like a monk fruit that's sweetened a little bit with maybe some maple syrup. You can use dates. Um, so then you've got the um, sweetener in there. So I like that we have coconut milk and using it instead of bananas because I've made um, ice cream out of bananas and I love it, but um, it's too banana-y and I don't want that. So this is better, I think, I'm hoping. Okay. Okay, so now let's, we're just gonna get kind of noisy. How long do we mix it for? Until it starts thickening. Okay. So do one. One? Yep. <laughs> I don't know how long we're supposed to do 
missing one thing sorry Instagram um, we it says pause due to poor connection I'm sorry that is a poor connection I don't know what the poor connection is what's it missing our chilled pan well that's not important an I know but in order to, to make it finished we got to have our chilled pan so I'm gonna check this out here hang on a second Hmm. I don't think it's going to thicken up. No, I think it's we've not. got to pour it in the chill pan and throw it in the pizza. Right, but I want to make sure that the, all the peanut butter, you know, that got to the bottom. Oh, we it's gotta... really mixed up. Okay. So Let's get that out of the freezer then. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, it's good mixed up. So you're just... You might want to take that over the sink I'm or going to. So you just need to have like... Um... Okay, there's flies everywhere. It's that time of season. So a chilled uh, loaf pan. That's all you need, and you just pour it on in, and Ooh, it's all... It looks really good. Okay, I need to taste this, because you have Are to Are you going to this... taste it before? Yeah, because it has okay. to freeze, and we want to know if it tastes any good. I want to know if it tastes any good. Yeah, but I, I'm just hoping that it has the, the consistency of real ice cream, so... Ooh. Ooh. Wow. That's very cool. Wow. I like it. I hope it... I hope it turns out like a nice ice cream because the flavor so far is really, really good. So that's so. it. It's just coconut, peanut butter, and honey. No, uh, I'm yeah. I hope that turns because based on that flavor, nah, that's gonna be a hit. So we shall see. But but you could use. So remember, guys, if you want it to be, um, if you want to change the nut butter, it could be any nut butter, seed butter. Um, so you can make it paleo friendly and then it's definitely dairy free because it's coconut milk. You can use um, What I say monk fruit or dates, dates. for your sweetener yep. So if you don't want to use honey um, because honey is not keto friendly, so that's just letting you know And but, one of the recipes actually suggested that we put in some Chocolate protein powder to make it taste. Like yeah, you chocolate. could do a chocolate so. one too, but that's a whole different recipe We'll try that another we'll time to try that. Thing. So. but that is it, and that really tasted good. It was a peanut butter coconut thing. Yeah, it tasted it's like a, good. It's like candy. I hope it turns out it's good. It's super sweet and candy. Oh, I'm like, I'm excited. So now the key is we have to take it out in 20 minutes. Yeah, and stir, stir it. Stir it. So they, freeze it again. Yeah, so the point of that is so it doesn't turn out icy. That's all. So yeah. um, we'll be doing that in about 20 minutes. Yeah. So in the so. meantime. In the meantime, what are we going to talk about today? So I think we should talk about... The past week and a half that we've had. So Two we, weeks. Yeah, we've had a crazy uh, couple weeks. So last Thursday, um, Judy, Devin, and Zane headed up early to Redfish while I was running kids around. And we were planning on going up on Friday. And amidst those travels, uh, Ashton and I dropped the girls off to various volleyball practice or games. And we were heading southbound on South Paraline and stopped at a stop sign when we were hit by a drunk driver at 6 p.m. So I, obviously that guy was starting a little early, but it hit us so hard that it pushed us through the intersection and another 50, 60 yards before we could stop. So my first uh, thought was how that hurt. <laughs> my second thought was, I hope Ashton's okay. And my third thought was, I hope the driver's okay. And of course, I didn't know the driver was drunk at that time, so. Um, I don't think you, I mean, you didn't know anything. I, I didn't know anything. All I know is we got hit, right? Right. And uh, so we were, I was sitting in my chair in pain, trying to figure out how I'm going to get up and um, tried to get out and uh, I was not standing up. And uh, so I sat back down and uh, after about 20 minutes, I was able to stand up a little bit. And about that time, the police officer came over and said, 
Sorry it's taking me so long to get to you. We were having a slight altercation with the drunk driver of the other vehicle. It's like, oh, <laughs> so that put a new light on things, so. So let me just tell you though, I'm, I'm like hearing some of these things for the first time too, because I didn't get all the story. I think, um, not just because I think Jody just didn't remember to tell me a lot of things. So I didn't know about this little <laughs> altercation that he was having yeah. with it. Oh. Yeah, so they had a little altercation. It took him about 20 minutes to get to us because it took, took two cops to kind of settle the guy down. So, uh, but they ended up taking the guy off in cuffs and to the hospital because he got injured too and then to jail. So, um, but it's given us a lot of uh, opportunity to reflect on uh, forgiveness because it's easy to become embittered and angry and frustrated and why did this happen to me and honestly I can say my first thought my first thoughts were one is Ashton okay and two is the driver okay and even when I learned that it was a drunk driver it was still I hope he's okay because obviously if you're drinking that early in the day there's some other things going on in your life that probably you're trying to hide from or escape from or just trying not to deal with at the time. And, um, you know, so it just made me think about, you know what, there's a lot of people that have some hidden problems and we just gotta love, love people and forgive people when they make a mistake. Because honestly, the next day when I woke up <laughs> and when I rolled out of bed, the first thought I had was, I'm grateful I have my legs. Uh, because I really was in a lot of pain Friday morning and when I rolled out, and normally I roll out and go to my knees in prayer and that wasn't happening. I just kind of rolled up, forced myself up and said, all right, Heavenly Father, you're gonna have to let me say my prayer standing today because I'm not bending down. Pretty sure so, Heavenly Father doesn't care how Yeah, I'm sure he didn't care, but that <laughs> was like my thought. I like a lot of so. times, laying in bed, yeah. sitting in the car. But the thing too is there's like quite a few miracles that have been going on. I mean, not only I mean, I think that we have to definitely acknowledge the fact that the Lord forgives us for the things that we're, you know, imperfect beings. And um, he is, you know, so forgiving and gracious to us that we can't, you know, I mean, this is just how Jody, this is, this is how we feel. It's like, we just can't hold, um, like hold any grudges or ill feelings um, towards others because of their, our own frailties, our own weaknesses. Um, but the other thing too is that there's other miracles that happen is that I don't know at 50 miles an hour I'm not sure how no I do know how but that you know it was miraculously saved you know they both were and Ashton you know albeit he's uh, probably feeling better than Jody and we still need to get him <laughs> checked out a bit yeah and for sure and we don't know all the you know underlying things that could be happening to him but um it's a miracle because he was sitting right behind Jody. He was sitting behind me and didn't get in, hurt as so bad as I did. I think that's a tribute to youth versus age. So true. <laughs> but he was in the His driver's old seat. Don't recover like they used to. So. <laughs> he was in the driver's seat, and Ashton happened to be sitting right behind it. And thank heavens they both had their seatbelts. Yes, on. thank heavens we both. Because I honestly I hate wearing a seatbelt. It bugs me yes, on he the doesn't shoulder. Doesn't hate it anymore. Yes, I still hate it, but I wear it. So please wear your seatbelts because yeah. if I would not have had my seatbelt, I would have definitely been ejected through the. Um, through the front window and and if Ashton hadn't have been he would have been ejected into my seat which broke and fell backwards and so he would have been ejected into the back of the top of my seat and probably could have had some serious chest trauma so but fortunately he had a seat belt on and we were both okay through the process and we're especially grateful for all those I mean tons of people stopped um, two, two people stopped and said hey we're glad to be witnesses because we saw all the crazy driving before he hit you and we were just glad he didn't hit us and sorry that he hit you and we had tons of friends Danny Bauer and uh, the Fleshman stopped they happened to see it and just just making sure that we were okay and saying hi hey thank you for making sure we're okay so we I appreciate all those people that stopped and took care of us so I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, the other thing was, too, is that it was a Mazda. So it wasn't even, it wasn't our car. It no. was our son's car. 
Which yeah, is totaled. Which it's I felt totaled. really, really bad about because Zane loves that Mazda M3. But when I told him, son, I feel bad, he goes, hey, dad, doesn't matter. It's just a car. At least we got you. So at least my son loves me. <laughs> <laughs> but the Mazda um, is designed so that it will collapse um, to, like, well, absorb, the crash, to absorb, absorb the, the crash. crash. And to, it did exactly what it was yeah, designed to so do. Yeah, and so instead of the entire back end, you should see the other guy's car. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a Ford Fusion, and I'm sorry, Ford. I don't know. I mean, I think there's some probably some great Ford vehicles, but that front end is all that the way into much. the dash. Yeah, that one and, got much. Um, but our rear end um, buckled where it was supposed to buckle so it would not collapse into the passengers. It's quite amazing. There's a lot of amazing things. So we're going to talk. We're just letting you know that, well, we feel, we know, that guardian angels do exist, that God does exist, and that the Lord is completely forgiving for all of us, so we need to offer that grace and forgiveness to others. Yeah, one of the things that I've thought a lot about is reaching out to the other driver and making sure he's okay, but I didn't know how to reach out to him. That was one of my thoughts on Friday. I was like, man, I hope that driver's okay, because really, you know what? It wasn't intentional, you know, obviously he was being careless, drinking and driving, and you know, please guys, I know a lot of you guys like to toss one up now and then, but please be responsible. And if you are having a problem with it, get some help, because there are a lot of people that will, that are willing and able to help you through some of the challenges that might be, that you might be encountering in life. And ultimately, you know what, we're all going through challenges. So we ultimately just gotta love each other and forgive each other as we all are not perfect. And you just gotta run with the punches and uh, be forgiving through the process. So, and hopefully learn a few lessons. So lesson learned. You just wear your seatbelt. <laughs> wear your seatbelt. She's always out. Are you wearing your seatbelt? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean so. the thing is beeping and making noises like it's. it's but unfortunately, <laughs> in our suburban, it beeps for a little bit and then it stops. Which is so fine. then it's nice because we're not hearing it, but then sometimes he forgets and now he's not going to. Yeah, I really don't like to wear a seatbelt, but I wear one. So. Obviously. And then just like he said, you know, when you drink, just drink responsibly because it could have been worse. It could other could things have been could have really happened. bad. So. And, you know, you just, the, the, I don't want to go through all the little different scenarios, but it could have been worse. So. Um, and then we've had like other tragedies that happened throughout the week um, with, with friends. Yeah. Um, with students, you know, and with just Yeah, people. we we probably should give a shout out to Austin and his family. A really good friend of our our children's friends, Austin, a student at Victory Charter School, was killed in a car accident almost the same day that we were in ours, so um, shortly thereafter. But I um, want to express our love to him. It's been a real unifying thing at the schools to see Liberty Charter and the Victory Charter kids come together and say, you know what, we got to rally around each other because we lost one of our own. And so it's been a blessing to see that love and that support happen. But boy, we sure miss that kid because Austin had a smile and a personality that just was really, really genuine and mm -hmm. very loving. So yeah. shout out to him, his family and especially all those friends that lost their best friend, so. And then um, just, our, just our friends that we care about. Um, we're just um, grateful that they're still with us, the Dumar family. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's been with cars, but they were T-boned at uh, 70, 80 miles an hour and all of their kids, and they are safe. So yeah. uh, that was definitely a miracle in, in that story. So we're grateful that they're all okay. So please, if you're driving, <laughs> drive safe, drive responsibly, and take a little bit of extra time. And that's been a hard lesson for me because when I was younger, I had a lead foot. And now that uh, I'm becoming more seasoned. I'm learning, you know what? It's just not that important to go that fast. So. Yep, obey the speed limits. The so. laws are there for a reason. So, and it's so. something I still fudge on, but I'm I'm definitely a lot better than I was after getting shook, literally. So. Yeah. I'm going to check the... Um, All right, yes. Yeah, Let's check that, minutes. and we're going to stir it, throw it back into the, um, into the freezer, and... Hey, if you guys have recipes that you know that are really tasty or that you think are tasty and you'd like us to try them out, please give us a suggestion in the comments below. And um, We actually tried one out last week, um, the last time we did this, and it was really tasty. 
So it's, it's already starting oh, to yeah, stiffen up. Oh yeah. Definitely. So definitely chill your coconut milk, chill your um, chill your pan. It's working really well. So I think what stir we stir it up so that we don't so it doesn't harden and, and uh, get too icy. Okay. That's why. So what I think we might do, and Judy can thumbs up or thumbs down this, is we're actually gonna head off to Derek, our brother-in-law's birthday dinner bash. And then when we come back, maybe we'll go live again and actually taste the ice yeah, cream. We'll do that. And it'll so, be later on tonight because I yeah. have a, we have a seven o'clock call with my um, challenge group um, for the 2B Mindset group, my intuitive eating group. Um, we have a seven o'clock call tonight. And so it might be after that. So yeah. probably about 7.45 ish. Yeah. So look for us to go live again. So um, one of the things that, um, I was going to talk about with forgiveness. I forgot already. I don't know. We had a pretty nice. Uh, sometimes you need to have those quiet moments to ponder and think. And so Judy and I were sitting in church today, and Judy was looking up forgiveness and some different themes there. And so it gave us some quiet moments, whispering in each other's ear on uh, the real power and the importance of forgiving other people and forgiving each other, and most improbable. Important, probably, ugh, most important probably is forgiving yourself. Yeah, that's actually what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, just giving yourself some grace because we're really, um, we live um, in an imperfect world. We're not perfect people. We're not supposed to be. We should always be, you know, if we think we fail, we're actually going to learn from our mistakes. And that's okay. And since the Lord can forgive us wait yeah since the Lord, i was trying to, i've got too many <laughs> thoughts in my head since the lord is forgiving us and he's gracious enough to um sacrifice his, his life for us then we can then in turn sacrifice and forgive others sacrifice our own feelings our own our own, maybe even anger and those kind of things and realize that we all have um things we need to work on and what i found is that when you forgive others you're really helping yourself because a lot of times people don't even know you're holding a grudge against them and the only soul that's cankering is your heart because you're the one that's festering about something that maybe somebody doesn't even know about or they've forgotten about. So forgiveness is not only for other people, but ultimately it's for you to heal your heart and bring peace to your mind and soul as you set that aside and let that go. So. Hey, so I just want to say, if you guys are watching, give me some hearts so I can make sure that you guys are still there with us. So <laughs> Catherine, Jordan, Adam, Holly, Karen, great to have you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And we will be back in quite a few hours so that we can taste test our coconut peanut butter honey ice cream. Awesome. All right. See thanks, you guys, guys in a few. See ya. Happy Bye. Sunday. Hey guys, we are back and we yes. We are finally back. It's a little late, but we had a great time at Derek's birthday party. Yes, if you watch my IG stories, I post a little bit about that, so it's awesome. A lot day. of fun we family love, time. Yes, definitely family time, and especially on Sunday, we love that, that yeah. opportunity. So here's the thing about our ice cream. What I decided to do was cover it with foil because I know that things can't get um, icy or freezer burned if I cover it. Um, especially idea. like when we do, if you ever store bread in the freezer, if you double bag it like with um, a grocery bag it, or even paper bag, it won't um, freeze or get the ice crystals on it. So that's what I did with the foil um, because I wasn't going to be here to keep stirring it every couple, every 20 minutes or 30 minutes. So that's what I did so it would be more soft yep, instead of icy. And stirred it once. So. Yep. And so here is the final result. It's staying in there. It's pretty solid, but I poked it a little bit. And let's see how it scoops out. Show them. Okay. Oh, it's like yeah. like soft scoop ice cream. Okay, put it in there. Okay. And we're going to try this. Okay, because it, so it could set up more if we wanted it to. Yep. Okay, we're going to try to show them, the, show them the ice cream, babes. There you go. Okay. Let's taste this. All right. Still a little soft. I probably would leave well, it in like, a little like, longer. Well, it's like soft serve. Though. Yeah, it's definitely like a soft serve. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's very coconutty. <laughs> so just so you know, if you don't want the coconut flavor, you're not going to like this. It's definitely but, coconutty. But this was no churning, so we didn't have to... Um, wow, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Mm. I would want it. Um, I would want it more set up. So it's got to freeze overnight. But that was not bad for what four out five hours. Yeah. It's been about five hours. And if you added a chocolate protein powder, this would taste like a Reese's. Oh my! <laughs> it would taste like a Reese's. I mean, the only thing it's missing is the chocolate. Seriously, we could put our because we have the Shakeology chocolate protein powder, or we have the Recover protein powder or Recover. Yeah, it's Recover. Recover Beach Body Recover, which is like a casein. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Oh, it's good. Yeah, that's a thumbs up. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> we're gonna have this, and we're gonna post the recipe. And this is healthy and yummy and delicious ice cream. And thumbs up. It's definitely a thumbs up. Awesome. Oh, I'm gonna have some more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a midnight good one. snacking right now at nine o'clock. There you go. You guys have Love a great it. night. Have a great Sunday. See ya. See ya. I'm gonna keep eating. I can't believe that's actually pretty dang good. It's really good.